Hey what's up, it's Chris from Rooker Films and in today's video I'm going to talk about the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro and walk you through all of the basic steps to get you started on your next editing project. So, once we've loaded up Adobe Premiere Pro, we want to begin by creating a new project. So, to do this, we want to go up to File, New Project, and from here, we're just going to select our location just here. So, we're going to browse through and find the location, and once we've found the correct location, we just want to choose there. And then we're just going to rename the project, so I'm going to call this example. But feel free to call this whatever you want, and make sure that it matches up with the projects that you're working on. Okay, so from here, we're just gonna press OK. And now we need to create a new sequence. So I'm just gonna to go to the import media to start and I'm going to double click and create a new item, new sequence. Okay, now from here, I'm just gonna rename this and we'll call this, um, let's call this a video. But again, feel free to rename this and customize this to suit your project. Now from here, I'm just gonna go over to the settings tab and I'm gonna make sure that the time base for this is 23.976 frames per second. And for this example, I'm gonna do a 1920 by 1080 composition. So I'm just gonna adjust the frame size over here. So it matches up to 1920 by 1080, but feel free to change this if you're doing any other frame dimensions. So let's say you're doing a square video for Instagram, for example, you're gonna to want to make this 1080 by 1080 pixels, and that's gonna create a one one square aspect ratio for you. But we're going to do widescreen for this video, so let's go back to 1920 by 1080. We're going to make sure that the pixel aspect ratio is set to square pixels. And then everything else here is completely fine. So let's just press OK. OK, so this down here, this is our timeline, and this is where we're going to do all of the editing. But before we do any editing, we need to import some project files and some videos. So we're going to go back over to this tab on the left, and we're just going to create a new bin. So I'm just gonna press new bin and that's this folder looking icon down here. Uh, okay, so let's just rename this footage. And what this does, this allows us to organize our footage and this allows us to organize the project so we know where all of our footage is and we can keep our project nice and clean and that's gonna ensure that all of our editing is done correctly. So we're just gonna go into the footage bin and we're just gonna double click and import. Okay, so now from here, we can scroll through and find our footage, so... Okay, so I'm just gonna import a few photos, so I'm just gonna scroll down, I'm just gonna select all of these, and then I'm going to press import. That's gonna take a few seconds to import, and once they're done, you'll find all of your video files or your image files over here on the left. So to get all of these image slash video files onto your timeline, you just need to select them all by pressing Command A, and drag them over onto your timeline. And that's just gonna import them there. Okay, so now that we've dragged that onto the timeline, we need to adjust the scale of this image. So I'm just gonna press the image here and I'm gonna go up to the effect controls tab. And then in the video effects, we can see that we've got motion, scale, rotation, anchor point, and the anti-flicker filter. Now to adjust the scale, all you need to do is drag down on this number here. Perfect. Now, if we wanted to create some camera movement or if we wanted to animate this a little bit from here, we can do so by using this same setup here. So next to scale, you'll see this time watch. So you want to press that. That's going to toggle some animation. You want to drag this cursor across to the right and then adjust the value to, let's say, around 50%. And if we go back to the start, you'll see there is some basic animation there. And that's really simple, but it's a really nice effect that you can use in all of your video footage across all of your projects. Okay, so below this motion tab, we have opacity. And like the scale, all we need to do to adjust this is just to pull down on the number and that's just going to adjust our opacity. Now, if we wanted to do multi-track video editing, we can do in Adobe Premiere Pro. And we just do that by stacking video layers on top of each other. So let's take this second image, for example, and we're just gonna drag that on top of the first one. So we're just gonna drag that on top there and that's perfect. And you can just do that in an infinite amount of times and just build up your project as high as you want it. However, do notice though that if you've got loads of layers stacked on top of each other, then your computer will take forever to render all of these images out as it's having to render every single one at the exact same time. So try and minimize the amount of video files or image files you've got stacked on top of each other. 
Okay, so now we've got two images on top of each other. We're going to use the opacity tool to reveal the layer below. So to do so, we're just gonna select this top layer here and I'm just gonna pull down on the opacity and that's just gonna reveal the layer below. So if we wanted to do some animation, we can do so by setting our first key point. So we'll set that to 100 and then we'll scroll across to the right and we'll pull this down to zero. Now, if we go back to the beginning, watch that through. Perfect. Now our scale and our opacity are both animating at the same time and that's gonna reveal the layer below. Perfect, and that's just some very basic video editing. So some of the tools that you'll use in Adobe Premiere Pro can be found on this box on the left. Now, some of these you're not gonna to need to begin with, but some of these are really essential and I'm just gonna take you through the essential tools to begin with. So first of all, we have the selection tool and that's just your normal cursor. Now, if we come down to here, that is our razor tool. This is our cut tool and the shortcut for this is C on your keyboard. All that the razor tool does is just cut. So if we make selection points here, you'll just see that I'm cutting these videos to pieces. And if we go back over to the selection tool, that's this one over here. Now the keyboard shortcut for this is V. If we go back over to there, we select one of these cuts and delete that. We've just made a nice cut in our video. So by using the razor tool and the selection tool, we've been able to kind of section these videos off and make tiny little cuts in the video. Okay, so if we wanted to move across our timeline here and reveal more of the video files that are over here, we can do so by using this hand tool down here. So we'll press that, and we're just gonna use this hand tool to drag across the timeline and reveal the files that come later into the sequence. However, if you're using a Mac laptop, then all you need to do is slide your two fingers across in any direction when you're on the timeline, and it does the same job as the hand tool would do. So that's a nice little shortcut there. So if you're playing your project in your timeline and your computer is struggling to keep up due to performance issues, then we can change the quality of the playback by going up to this button here, that's full. Now we can change the playback quality to full, half resolution or quarter resolution. Now if your computer is really struggling to keep up, then you can render the files in quarter resolution and that's gonna make playback a lot smoother. Please note though though, this doesn't actually have any effect on your video files whatsoever. This is just the playback quality. When we export, it will still export back in full quality, even if you're in this quarter resolution quality. So if we wanted to create a title in this project, we would do so by going up to file, pressing new, and then going down to legacy title. Now that's just going to load up this box here, and that's just gonna make sure that we set our width, so that's 1920 our height is 1080, our time base will match up to our project and that's 23.976. And we'll just rename this to title one. Okay, so from here that has loaded up a text box and we can create whatever text we like here just by pressing onto the box, typing whatever we want to type. And then we can adjust the scale of this by going up to here. We can adjust the spacing in between each letter by pulling on this one here. Um, if you've got multiple text layers, um, so let's say you've got multiple lines of text, if you wanted to add spaces in between each line, then you can just pull down on this tab here. Uh, you can adjust your font over here. And if you wanted to use some legacy title styles, you can just do so by coming down to here. And these are just preloaded text templates to throw on top of your video. Um, however, some of these do look a little amateur, so I wouldn't advise using some of these. Um, but once you're happy with your text, just gonna come out of that by pressing the X, going back over into our project, and just dragging that over onto the file. Perfect. Now, the problem is with this text is it has now imported into the footage bin because we were in the footage bin when we created this. So, to amend this, we need to go back up to our project. We called this project, um, we call this project example. So I'm just gonna scroll back up. I'm gonna open the bin if it's not already open. So I'm just gonna open the bin by pressing that. And I'm just going to drag that out of the footage bin and drag it below this video layer here. So now if we close the footage bin, you'll see that the title is now sitting above the sequence and below the footage bin. And that's exactly where we need it to be because we'll know we'll be able to find it there at a later date if we need to come over to it. Okay, so if I wanted to adjust the saturation of this image, I would do so by going over to the effects tab and searching for fast color corrector. 
Now I'm just going to drag that on top of our footage layer. So I'm just going to drag that onto this layer here. And that's going to load up fast color corrector on the effects tab up on the left. And this all looks a little bit confusing, but it's actually really simple. This color wheel here is basically the colors and we can manipulate the colors and make it look whatever color that we want to. So in this example, I'm just going to drag this white dot in the middle over towards the orange. And if you look at the image on the right, instantly the image has become a lot warmer. Now, if we do the opposite action and we pull this over towards the blue, our image has become a lot colder. And we can do the same thing if we rotate all the way around. Now, this is just some really basic color correction, but if you know how to use this tool, it can really help you later on in your projects. Um, but if we wanted to adjust the saturation, all we need to do is come over to saturation and we just need to pull this up. Now 200 is going to look overly saturated and zero is going to be completely black and white. So find anywhere in between there that fits your specific look and your specific style. But for this example, I'm just going to leave it on 147. So once we're finished with that, I'm just going to close that down. And we're just going to move on to some brightness controls. Now for brightness, I like to use an effect called levels. So I'm going to go back to the effects tab and I'm going to search for levels. And there it is right there. So I'm just going to drag that over onto the footage and I'm just going to go down to levels on the effects tab. Now this all looks really confusing as there's a lot of settings to be adjusted, but the basic settings that you need to know about brightness are these top five settings here. And the only two that I really use is the white input level and the black output level. So let's see what happens when we adjust the white input level. Let's pull this down and instantly the highlights are becoming a lot brighter. And this is great to make your overall image. Now, if we pull down on the white input level, you will notice that the highlights are becoming a lot brighter and overexposing a little bit. So we'll readjust that and put that back down to 255. Now let's go down to the black output level and if we pull this up, you'll notice that the shadows are becoming a lot brighter and overexposing now. So let's pull that back down to zero. So if you just needed to adjust the highlights, you'd use the white input level. But if you just needed to adjust the shadows, you'd use the black output level by doing so. Okay, so what do you do now if you want to export this video? Let's say you're happy with this masterpiece of a video and you want to export this. Well, to do this, you'd make sure that your video is selected. You'd go up to File, Export, Media. Okay, so now this is just going to load up another menu and this looks really confusing, but it's actually not that bad. So to begin with, we're just gonna go up to the format. And now which format you use depends on where you're going to export this video to. Now for most cases, you're just going to export to web upload. So for this, we're just going to use H.264. However, if you're exporting for TV, then you may have to export to QuickTime or to DNX HR, DNX HD, MXF, OP1A. Now, this all looks really confusing, so forget about that for now. Just focus on H.264 for web upload. Now, here we can just change the output name and the output destination. Save that to whatever you want to call it. And then we're just going to make sure that our width matches up with the project settings. So that's width 1920 by 1080. Our frame rate is the same. Everything there is perfect. And for maximum quality, we're just going to make sure that we render at maximum depth. We're going to make sure that we use maximum render quality by turning that box on. And then we're just going to amend our bitrate encoding to compressed bitrate, that's CBR. And we're just going to pull this up to, let's say, 30. Now, the higher you pull this, the lower the compression will be, meaning the better quality your image will be. However, your image file size will be massive if you pull this all the way up to 50. You can see the estimated file size changing down here. So if we pull this down to one, you will notice that our estimated file size is now three megabytes. However, this is going to look like absolute garbage. So to so try and find a level roughly halfway where the quality is great, but the file size is not too large. Okay, so if we wanted to crop this video, then what would we do? Well, we'd go up to source, and we can just apply some basic cropping here. So let's say we want to crop the top by 100 and we want to crop the bottom by 100. Now, if we go back over to our output, you'll notice that the crop has been amended to the top and the bottom, and this has created that anamorphic movie cinema look. So once we're happy with all of these settings, we're just going to press export. 
And that's just going to take a few minutes to export our project. And once you've got your video file, you can upload that to the web or do whatever you want with your video file. Okay, so once that's exported, all you need to do is grab your video file and upload it to the internet and let the whole world see your video. These are just a few of the very basic settings that Adobe Premiere Pro has to offer. But if you can learn these settings, then you should be able to learn every other setting in the program and you will be able to create some amazing videos using this software. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please do let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really do truly appreciate it. I hope you're having the most amazing day today. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.